What's going on everybody? It's Train Neil here with Trading Stocks and welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be another thinkorswim tips and tricks type video and it's going to be all about this window right here. It's going to be all about order execution and really allowing you guys to unlock the full potential of your active trader window. There's so much more you can do in thinkorswim. I think it's really the best part of this application is its active trader window there's so much more that you can do other than just hit buy hit sell there's so many kind of little small idiosyncrasies that i've learned over the last six years of using thinkorswim that i think no matter how long you've been trading how long you've been using the platform i might be able to teach you at least a little something in this video so hopefully you're excited for it if you are hit that like button if you're new around here hit the dang red subscribe button and let's not waste any more time and go ahead and jump right into it. And I'm going to start actually in the setup application settings. I just want to go over this with you all quickly. So the first thing I want to show you is order defaults, uh, obviously default order type limits, blah, blah, blah. The cool thing I want to show you here is I get asked all the time, Trey, how do you set quantities? How do you set these quantities on these buttons? Uh, by the way, if you don't know, I guess I'm cover it quickly. When you hit these buttons, these are what changes like insta change your quantity that you're trading uh trey how do you change those buttons i clicked the wrong thing uh and you do that via where i just was application settings order default and this has presets you know 500 200 so if i click 500 apply it's going to set up every 500 and these are not fully customizable you can only do them kind of like i just did there you can only do them to a certain degree but you can't type in numbers here like i can come type in two hit apply and it's gonna go two six ten twenty forty so uh you know it's not you don't only have to go by what's in the drop down um but it's not fully customizable to that degree so that is something that's very important i'm gonna put mine on back what it was and then also your order quantity and in, incre uh, increments you can also change this to whatever you want and what that's going to do is it's going to change so you see how every time i click plus or minus it's adding adding or deleting 100 that's what that number does okay that's kind of the boring part get that out of the way but it's still very useful i get asked i think that might be the number one question trey how do you change these numbers that's how you do that now I want to go ahead and jump into the settings of my active trader window because this is not if you just downloaded thinkorswim this is not what your active trade window is going to look like i think it has like market buy market sell and that's kind of it i don't remember the, what the exact default was but uh you do so i just hit the cog on the active trade window there and you can bring over buttons you can see mine here i have buy ask buy bid sell ask sell bid I personally think I am a scalper. I, I'm in and out of trades very fast. You can actually see a trade I just took right here. I was literally setting up for this video, uh, taking notes for this video, and I saw INM going off. I caught a little trade there. I wish it would have gone through resistance, but when I recognized it wasn't, I took my little profits right before the dump. Now we're getting off topic. Um, but I think it's very important to be able to buy, buy the bid, uh, buy the ask, or sell the bid, sell the ask, dependent on what kind of situation I'm in. So I have all those here. And you do that just by typing buy ask, click add items, and it'll add it to your lines here. Uh, so that's all my buttons there. It's very important you get this auto sin typed on too. I don't think for whatever reason that's in the default, but you get that typed or you get that in, you have that checked. When you hit buy, it's going to obviously auto send your order. It's not going to pop up the confirmation dialogue because that's really annoying. Uh, then you also... I guess if you don't trade pre and post market, this isn't important, but I do. Uh, so you're going to want to have your time and force there as well. Um, and you can see the rest of my settings there. Obviously, you guys can stop and screenshot what you want. Um, since we're talking about time and force, let's go ahead and talk about that. So time in force in the active trade window, whenever you're trading 930 to four o'clock, if you're just trading equities, the basic stuff, you're pretty much always on day. Good till canceled, good till canceled, extended. I don't use good till canceled orders. That means that they will stay open if I want to buy INM, if it drops below $2, I want to buy INM at 179. By the way, I'm about to show you a trick. I can go out and set, let me put, just in case some, some, this stock gets tricky on me. Let me do one share, uh, but I can go. So I'm going to go ahead and set a buy, a limit order, bang, 175. That is going to cancel at the end of the day. It's a day order. If I did that same thing on good till canceled, it would stay open for as long as it needed to until it got filled. Uh, so that's what the difference is there. And then extended, this is what you need to be on if you're trading pre-market or post-market. So really time after hours trading, you're going to need to be on extended trading for that. And obviously good till canceled, extended, same thing for extended hours uh, as the other good till canceled. So that is the time and force there. But 
now let's let's uh, we're, we're gonna keep segueing into we're kind of using uh, the conversation to segue here let's talk about what I just did Trey how did you just place your order like that that was that was weird I don't know you didn't hit any buttons how did your how was your order out there if I come in so the stock is currently dropping down to 207 say I want to buy the stock I'm gonna and this is not a realistic situation because I don't actually want to get filled. Uh, but say I want to buy the stock at 179 and I don't want to buy any higher than 179 I don't need to go to the trade window, type in 179 place the order, do all that. No, you just come to your active trade window and you just click this little box right here. So where it's showing the bid size, you click right in here. It throws your order out there. Now I have an order at 178 whatever I put it at. Now, if the stock drops that low, I will get filled. Um, and it's a limit order as well. So it's putting out, that's a limit buy order. If the stock price gets to that price, it will fill you as many shares as it can, uh, no higher than that price. That's what that does. Also, while you have orders on your chart like this, so I just threw this order out, say I changed, you know, the stock starts to bounce. I wanna move my order up a little bit. All I have to do, grab this. I can just grab this on the screen and I can drag it around. I can drag this to other prices, move it down, move it up. This it's this is going to bring up a confirmation window. You hit send. Now my order is sitting at 183. You can also see it sitting there uh, at the buy order there. Now I want to cancel this order. I don't want to take this order. I'm just going to come up, hit the cancel all button. That clears all my open orders. That's what the cancel all button does. Same thing, other direction. A lot of people don't know this. Say I want to buy this stock. If it breaks 237, I'm a high a day breakout trader. I want to I'm going to buy this stock if it breaks 237. Bang. That is a buy stop order. Now that is not a limit order. That is a market order. Uh, if it was a limit, obviously you can't put limit orders above where the price is currently trading or it would just fill you, right? It's like, oh, you don't want to buy. If I went and put a limit order at 238, it would fill me at 209 because the limit order is saying, oh, I, we won't fill you any higher than 238. That's fine, but you, it's under that, so we'll fill you. This is a buy stop order, which will only fill you if the price touches 238 or above. And this is a market order as well. So if the stock comes and rips, it rips to 250 uh, after 237, you're gonna catch some slippage. You're gonna catch some slippage there, but that's how you place buy stop orders. Now, let's say I was in the stock. You know what? I'm gonna, let's, let's spend a little bit of money on this video. I'm gonna buy one share of this stock. Bada bing, bada boom, hit join the bid. I'm not filled yet, by the way. You can see your order sitting there waiting to get filled. I'm in. I'm in one share of INM at 207. In no way a real trade. I'm just showing you guys. Uh, but say I want to long this trade and I want to stop out. Now I'm now I'm long in this position. If it goes below $2, I want to stop out. Bang. What I did there was I hit the ask side. So I was on the bid side doing my buys earlier. Now I'm in the ask size of my thinker swim window and I put out a stop loss order. Once again, this is a market order. If the stock comes in like rips down below $2, like rips to 190, you're gonna catch some slippage, but you're gonna get filled. That's how you one click set stop loss orders in thinkorswim. And that is a very, very useful uh, tool as well. So let's go ahead and can't, actually, that's not cancel. Let me show you what this flatten button does. So what flatten is going to do is cancel all open orders and market sell positions. It's kind of the oh shit button, right? It's going to cancel all your open orders and it's going to market close any positions you have open long or short. So I'm going to go ahead and hit flatten. It cancels the order and it market sells me at 205. This video has now cost me two cents. You are now, you now uh, need to go like the video to pay me back for that two cents. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> but that is a little bit of all of that now I want to show you some other ways you can place orders. That's all kind of how you place orders in the thinker. Actually, you know what? Let's let's go ahead and wrap up the the uh, active trader window. Sorry, let's go ahead and wrap up the active trader window with the templates here as well. This is the last box on this screen that I haven't talked about yet. What I've been doing: placing single orders. Simple. You buy, you sell. That's a single order. It's what ninety nine percent of us do. What you can't do with single orders, I see this question asked on the internet a lot. When I was in that one share, let's actually do it again. So when I'm in this one share of, okay, let me just buy the ask so I get in. I'm in, I, let me just buy the ask so I get, thank you. I'm in one share now, by the way, you can now see uh, 402 by 401. That means I bought 402 shares of this today. I've sold 401. My current position is long plus, you know, plus one share, long one share, average price 208, PL open, PL day. You see all that information there as well. But I can now not go set a limit, a stop limit. So I want to get out of the share if it goes to 190. And I like, so I can't sit that. And oh, if it goes to 237, if it goes to highs, I want to, I want to uh, take profit. You can't do that because you are using a single order. 
on a single order, you cannot have other orders out for the same number of shares, right? So if I have, I, want, I only have one share here, I can't put a stop loss for one share and a profit target for one share. If you want to do that, go away. If you want to do that, let me flatten this position, uh, outbreak even, that trade didn't cost me money. Thanks guys. Uh, if you want to do that, you're going to have to go to target with bracket. Actually, I, I'm pretty sure TRG means target. I might've just made that up. Go to TRG with bracket. Um, and from here, you're going to set, so I, it might make a little bit of sense. Uh, it might not make any sense. When, when I hit uh, buy, it's going to give you your, and there's different ways you can do it. So this is value offset. So this is one point up, one point down. There is uh, tick offsets, which if you're using tick charts, it's going to make sense. If you don't use tick charts, don't worry about that. I'll explain tick charts in another video. I'm not getting all into that. Um, so there's percent changes as well. So you can do, you know, 1% up or one point up for this scenario. Let's just do one point because uh, I want to show you kind of a I think the best way to handle this too. So say I want to get filled. I'm going to put a buy stop order. So I want to get filled one share if INM breaks 238. Bang. Look, it instantly gives me my 238 order is out there and I have a stop limit order at 138 and a profit at 338. Obviously, that's insane. I don't expect the stock to make necessarily that big of a move if it breaks out. So if it comes to 250, I want to take profits. And once I enter, if it comes back down below 222, I want to exit. I think that's the best way to handle it. You guys saw how I how, how I did that. So I put a template out there with pretty large, just to throw the point out there, whatever. Just give me my template. And then from the screen, you can kind of drag your orders around. Not that I trade with this template very often. I pretty much always take single trades. I actually don't think I've ever taken a real money trade with a bracket like this. But I some of you guys might like that. Some of you guys might want to have stops and profit targets on the same shares that you're trading. And that is how you do that. So now I'm gonna go ahead and hit cancel all there. Gonna show you another way you can enter orders. This one is, I don't really know why you would do this uh, because you can, like I said, I've shown you how to do it just from the active trader window, but you can also say, I wanna get in at 192. So maybe you're maybe you're analyzing a stock. You have found a decent support level around 203. So if it comes down here uh, around two, I wanna get in the stock. You can right click buy, send bang your order is there now as well and that is going to go off of so why, trey why did it put 25 shares in there because that is going off of this setting default quantity of orders that's what that is going off of uh, so that's just quickly another way you can place orders in thinkorswim i'm pretty certain i've covered everything i wanted to cover here i've shown you guys my button layout i've shown you how to change the order defaults how to change these numbers how to change uh how many uh hundreds or however x amount of shares you want this to change i've explained what all of this means i've shown you how to place orders how to one one click place limit orders uh down and up i've shown you how to one click place stop loss i've shown you how the bracket orders work so that you can have stop loss and profit target in the same trade if you guys have other tips for the active trade window put them in the comment section down below or just other ways that you enter stocks or you enter and exit your positions in thinkorswim put them in the comment section down below let's help each other out down there uh, with that being said if you enjoyed this video if you learned anything you made it to the end hopefully you enjoyed it a little bit please hit the like button if you're new around here hit the red subscribe button with that being said i'm gonna go ahead and sign out of this video i will catch you all in the next one Thank you